Hey everyone, this is Claire Lawrence. So I did a video recently where I took a mold and I painted it with mica powders. And I was thinking about this and you know for a few days now and I thought I might have a couple molds handy already painted so that I could pour excess resin into them. Because once this is painted, as you can see, I just put clear in it so it's fairly transparent. So all I would need was a little extra colored resin and with all the projects I use, that shouldn't be a problem at all. So I thought I'd give this a try and just see if colored resin affected it too much um, or if it just made it opaque enough that it really made the colors vibrant on the outside. So that would be really helpful because I'm always looking for ways to use up that extra resin because we don't want that stuff to go to waste. So I picked up this mold here. Let's see if it's focusing in. Yeah, I think that's probably the best it can do. So we got a little creature here going off to the side. Let's see if I can. Right in here. And then it's got a nice little swirl pattern here. So I'm going to paint this up. Have this basically mold sitting and ready. And if I get a little excess, I just pour some in. And next project, pour a little bit more in until we get to a um, happy size and then uh, pop that out and see how it works. Here we go. Okay guys, I thought I'd speed up the process a little bit and just talk through this. Okay, I'm using a silicone brush and basically just barely dipping it into the mica powders and spreading it out. Uh, I'll go back and forth between the point and the chisel point uh, depending on how high or low the ridges are. So what I'm doing is I'm getting the areas that are the closest to me first. In other words, from the inside of the uh, the uh, mold, it looks like the high points. So they're the easiest to get to. Um, and if you get those covered first, then you can work on the deeper parts later without worrying about contaminating the top parts. So it's almost like reverse painting, if you want to call it. So in this case, it's the ridges or it would be, um, I guess you could say the shadows. Uh, once the molds popped out um, and then so once I've got these ridges done up pretty good I can go into the curve areas and start filling it in so you can see the dragon shape I'm working on the head part right now and, and the starting to work on the neck a bit and fill that area in I've got some um, warm tones I'm using in here there's some purples but there's also um, some brass, bronzes, some golds, and a little bit of pink. Why not? So just having fun with the colors. And I wanted to do the dragon in some deep colors, some really rich saturated colors. And then the plan was the rest of the area to do some golds and things like that. The inside there it looked like it was going to be almost a, a bulb like shape so I thought yeah, maybe make kind of a pearlish out of it so on half of it I used kind of a, an interference pink color and then the other part of the half of the bulb area I filled it in with fuchsia so that should give that kind of a pearlescent shimmer to the whole thing um, occasionally you'll see me dump it over because there's like Basically, I'm brushing on mica flakes or mica powder, and you'll get some clumps and stuff. So I didn't want to leave clumps where it would possibly clump up in the resin or not adhere to the resin. So I, I tap it out occasionally when I get big chunks. And so it's just a matter of working it into the crevices a little bit more, a little bit more, building up my colors, and occasionally I'll even push on it from the bottom so that I can access some of the details. And with painting the areas that are easy to paint first, it allows me to do less worry about the painting. In other words, I don't have to worry about messing up too much. It's like kind of like cuddling your outlines really dark first before you fill it in with a marker or something transparent.
Okay, I wanted to talk about a little bit about what I did. It looks a little bit like a hodgepodge mess, but hopefully it'll work out okay. I colored it the same way. Whoops. That's what happens the bump something. It goes way out of camera. Okay. So I did very similar that I did with the mermaid and played with uh, the ridges first because that's the first thing um, that comes out as far as the color and then started pushing the other colors into the in-between spaces. So, sorry about the camera movement and stuff. Okay, so what I did in here, let's see if I can get a little pen in, or brush in here. Let's see. Okay, so the high points in the ridges and stuff, you saw me doing purple first. It's a deep purple, so I wanted to get the deep purple in there. Okay, and then I built up some other colors. So I wanted to do kind of a chocolate brown in there. And there was also a plum, so I was kind of working with the plum there to get it started to kind of blend it in. And then the remainder of the space I filled in with a uh, chocolate brown. And I wasn't worried about it flicking around the sides or around here because it would add a nice little kind of shading if you want to call it um, and I had planned on using uh, deep brown and purple and plum in here as far as the colors and then on the outside area of space and then right around in here I would use a contrasting golds uh, a little bit of orange and uh, Actually, I'm sorry, let me start off first. It says sun, sunshine yellow, and then a little bit of an orange color and a uh, gold. So, and then I brought the gold in around, and you saw some of the yellow and gold brought in around on the sides too. And it was mainly focused on mostly there and then flickering it up. So it should have some kind of blend. I don't know how high I'm gonna pour the resin into the mold. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and then wherever it's transparent, you might see some colors from the resin itself that's poured into there. And then I thought I'd play a little bit with, oh yeah, no, I used some pinks in there too, and a little bit of a, an interference pink as well. And I thought that the center area here, I'd pull in some of that pink into that. And I started with the interference on part of it because I wanted it to give it a pearly kind of a look to it because it looks like it's concave. I think I got the right thing. Yeah, cave. Uh, and then I've got the um, pink, the rest of it, and then blended it together. So it, I don't know. We'll see if it worked out okay. Um, most of these micas have a pearlescent or a metallic sheen to them. So they should work out rather well together. And that's another reason why. So you can see the outside edge is kind of a mixture of all the colors from the, um, the colors that are floating around and they should work really well together because in the color wheel it's you know it works with the purples and the oranges and the yellows and so all those areas there they work well together so and occasionally you saw me take this out of the picture and move it to the side but you probably also noticed that when i was fucking and all of a sudden you'd get a big blob that would go brook and what i would do is literally pull it over to the side there, turn it upside down, give it a couple taps to get the little blob out. And if it didn't work, then I just blend it in the blob. So technical words there, blob. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this guy to the side and whenever I do a piece, actually I think I'm planning on doing three, maybe four pours today. So I'll put a little bit in there and when I'm done with that and I go to pop it out, I'll get a little video of that. So, should be kind of fun. Later. So this one has got a couple layers of excess resin in it and it's ready to come out. So, let's see what we can do about that.
Okay, that turned out like a whole lot better than I expected. Ooh. 